Hi everyone, I'm Susan Kellner of the Ontario Pesticide Education Program and I'm here to go over Chapter 3 in the Grower Pesticide Safety Course Manual. There are about 20 slides in this presentation and it will take us about uh, 15 minutes to review. Okay, by the end of this lesson you should be able to identify the information you will find on a pesticide label, list information found on each part of a label, identify and interpret the hazard symbols and signal words you'd find on a label. Okay, reading the label, the pesticide label, tells you how to use the product safely, how to use the product legally, what to do if there's an accident. It is a legal document and charges can be laid against you if you don't use a product according to that pesticide label. Pesticide labels are online. You search uh, in your search engine the keywords pesticide labels Health Canada and you will come to the uh, pesticide label search. Good source of pesticide labels and all up to date and uh, you can print them off or save them. Pesticide has uh, a label that with a principal display panel and also a secondary display panel. We're first going to start with the principal display panel and here it is here. So we have a product name which should be front and center on the label. In this case it's Pest Manager 500 EC. Classification will be there near the product name. So in this case the classification, the federal classification is agriculture. You'll also see process possibly on the products you buy at Home Hardware or um, Canadian Tire or Home Depot, any of those uh, homeowner um, stores, a domestic pesticide. In this case, agricultural is a commercial pesticide. You could see the name commercial instead of agriculture there or industrial or institutional. And it also could be a restricted product, which would give you a heads up that there might be additional precautions you need to take. You might need a, a permit or something else with that product. Okay, net contents will be there. So that's the uh, quantity that will be in that jug or uh, container. Mode of action group number, and we'll talk more about this under uh, pesticide resistance chapter, but the group one herbicide or a group one insecticide or it will a fungicide grouping, it will be up there in the corner and you will need to know this. We need to uh, know the group number uh, to be aware of what um, products we're applying, what group numbers we're applying to our crops and our pests so that we can reduce uh, and uh, slow down the development of pesticide resistance by pests, but uh, that'll be more in, in a future chapter. All right, we can also look and uh, read the label before using on the principal display, display panel. That is almost, I believe, on absolutely every uh, product you will see, read the label before using. Six, precautionary symbols and words. So these are the heads up warnings that you need to be aware of. Without reading the fine print you can see uh, caution or warning or danger and it could be um, poison or inflammatory. Uh, we'll talk about those in a little few minutes here. Uh, active ingredient will be on the front panel as well so you will know the actual pesticide uh, active ingredient and it'll tell you a concentration as well. In this case it's mononolachlor and it's 500 grams per liter. All right, the PCP Act and Registration Number. We talked a little bit about that in the regulation chapter. So um, each product gets its own Pest Control Products Act registration number from Health Canada, the Pest Management Regulatory Agency, and that is unique to that product. And so good to know if you're referring to that product for a first aid or at the hospital or with anyone about which product you used. Registrant name and address, the company that is looking after that product, uh, selling it, distributing it, so the name and address is there and even a phone number so you can contact them if you need help. Okay, the secondary display panel is more of the fine print 
And here we'll see directions for use and precautions. That's number 10 and 11. Now number 10, uh, directions for use. And now these aren't um, numbered on the uh, label itself. These are just numbered from your manual so we can go through this in a logical way. But directions for use, which pests, which crops, or livestock this can be used on, how much to use, how much to mix, how to apply, and pre-harvest intervals, restricted entry intervals, all those sorts of things, always under directions for use. And precautions then, there will be a section on precautions, keep out of reach of children, and it'll go through some of the hazards for um, personal health hazards, and uh, the uh, environmental hazards will be under precautions, so take a good look at those directions. Okay, we can go on, we'll have disposal under a heading, we'll have first aid under a heading, toxicological information, if there's any additional information that a uh, emergency response or, or physician needs to know when treating uh, you with a toxic response, and then notice to user is on all labels. Okay, let's go over the hazard symbols a little bit. So there's four of them, um, poison, corrosive, flammable, explosive. They can be on a pesticide label and they will be on the pesticide label in different degrees. So caution, warning, or danger. Caution has three sides. Warning, uh, medium, moderate hazard has four sides, and then the highest hazard has the most sides, which is danger. So more sides equals more danger with using that product. So example, what does a combination mean? So danger, poison, the symbol could be on the label because the acute oral LD50 is less than 500 milligrams per kilogram. Acute dermal, meaning skin, LD50 is less than 500 milligrams per kilogram, or the acute inhalation LC50 is less than 0 0.5, uh, 0.05 milligrams per liter in air. So that is what would put that symbol combination on a pesticide label. So uh, it's dangerous, it's dangerous, uh, for ingestion, oral, dermal, skin, inhalation through the nose. Highly acutely toxic. There can be other things than those symbols. There could be warning, um, warnings for eye and skin hazards. So special warnings for eye hazards. There are three of them, again, in the three uh, different levels. Danger, corrosive to eyes, warning, eye irritant, caution, eye irritant. So you're going to have to be aware. And then, of course, what would you do? You would certainly wear goggles, uh, face shield goggles when using the product. Special warnings for skin hazards. Uh, again, um, danger, warning, caution, the three levels there for skin irritant. Again, really advising you that your skin needs to be covered when using this product. Okay, there are additional special uh, product products with um, what we call um, restricted uses. So on a restricted or commercial product, there could be a nature of restriction, and that will be in a box at the beginning of the label, and you check the label for nature of restriction. That is uh, bringing to your attention that in this case, let's look at nature of restriction. This product is to be used only in a manner authorized. Contact local pesticide regulatory authorities about use permits, which may be required. So there could be a permit required for this product and it's to be stored and displayed apart from food and feed. So there will be various warnings, additional warnings that uh, need to be drawn to your, your attention and you'll see that with the restricted use. Other label statements. Okay, I want to bring your attention to the pre-harvest, pre-grazing, pre-slaughter statements. So how many days must pass between when you have the pesticide application and you have activities? So harvesting or grazing that uh, crop to animals or a pre-slaughter interval if you've applied a pesticide to an animal. So those that period of time will be stated on the label and it must be followed. Food safety, let's just talk a little bit about pesticide residues that break down during the time between the end of an application and when you're allowed to harvest, slaughter, or graze. 
So once the period is ended, the pesticide residues are below the maximum residue limits allowed in the food. Maximum residue limits are set by Health Canada for each pesticide applied to each food, and that is uh, detailed in the uh, pesticides and food section, and also the um, regulation uh, chapter one, we've mentioned this already. Okay, other label statements. Restricted entry interval, REIs. REI is the period of time after after a pesticide has been applied that agricultural workers or anyone else must not do hand labor tasks in treated areas. So restricted entry. Examples, um, for Matador, 24 hours for all crops. Scala, SC, 12 hours except for activities for the following. Palm fruit and bulbs, 24 hours for hand thinning. Grapes, 24 hours for cane uh, turning girdling, training, tying, pruning. So if with the activity, um, it will be stated on the label this period of time where people must not do hand labor tasks. Note if the REI is not stated on the label, you cannot find it there. Um, the default is to use a 12 hour restricted entry interval. Okay, early entry is possible with a restricted entry interval. Um, certified farmers, farmers assistants or workers may need to enter a treated area early to do short-term tasks before the end of an REI and this is allowed if you follow these guidelines. So, and this is in your manual, zero to four hours, no one enters, do not enter. At the end of the application is the start of this 24-hour restricted entry interval and no one may enter from zero to four. Now, if you're in the four to 12 hours, early entry is possible by the certified farmer, but you must not do the hand labor task. Must only be in the area for less than one hour in a 24 hour period. And then wear the protective clothing and personal protective equipment stated on the label for mixing and loading, plus wearing a NIOSH approved respirator. So you can go back in if you must. Now from 12 to 24 hours, you can have some early entry by workers, but they again cannot do hand labor tasks. They would be passing through the crop for some particular reason. They would not contact any services that may have residues on them. And again, they're wearing protective clothing and personal protective equipment items if they're stated on the label. And finally, after 24 hours, you can enter the area uh, it's the end of the restricted entry interval on the label and anyone can enter. Okay, how are we going to keep farm workers and others out of a treated area? Well, you want to tell farm workers and others about um, the restricted entry interval and uh, you can tell them verbally, everyone needs to know. You can use signs like this one and we have these available from the Ontario Pesticide Education Program and you can call us to buy these signs. You could post the sign and then people would know not to go in and then once the entry interval is over, then you can remove the sign. Okay, spray drift buffer zones. What is a spray drift buffer zone? It is an area that you leave untreated to protect sensitive habitats. So it will be stated on the label and you must leave that area untreated. So it could be a sensitive terrestrial habitat, forested areas, woodlocks, shelter belts, pastures. It could be a sensitive fresh water habitat, lakes, rivers, ponds, marshes, streams, or how is a spray drift buffer zone measured. So you're measuring the distance between the point of application and the closest downwind edge of the sensitive area and downwind is key there. If you take mix, you would use the largest buffer zone listed on the two uh, labels allowed for tank mixing. Vegetative filter strip. Certain pesticides, for example, uh, Elixir WSV require a vegetative filter strip. An area of permanent vegetation at least 10 meters wide maintained along the downhill slope beside aquatic habitats. Okay, and on our next slide here is an example of a certified farmer using a spray drift buffer zone and a vegetative filter strip as indicated on a pesticide label. And this example 
is um, in your um, in your manual as well. There's an east wind happening at the time of application. So in the corner, you can see the wind direction. And the label says, leave a 15 meter spray drift buffer zone. And it also says you can use this product if you leave the 10 meter vegetative filter strip that has been maintained along the aquatic freshwater habitat. All right, so you can see up here, there is no vegetative filter strip required as the runoff will flow downhill. However, the 10 meter vegetative filter strip will be required between the edge of the crop and that aquatic freshwater habitat. Okay, and the wind direction, the wind is coming this way. So we need to maintain a 50 meter spray drift buffer zone on this side to this upper, uh, higher level aquatic freshwater habitat. Okay, so uh, review that, think it over how you would use it on your own farm and uh, when you see that on the pesticide label. And also uh, in, in the manual is um, uh, another example too when the wind direction is from the other direction, west. Okay, let's go on to pesticide use in high tunnels. In high tunnels, you may use pesticides with directions for either greenhouse or field uses. So either label is okay, but there's some precautions um, PMRA would like you to know. A high tunnel environment is unique. Pesticide residues could break down more slowly. Crops could be injured more easily. Certified farmers could have increased exposure within these high tunnels. So take extra precautions, reduce your exposure, wear the most protective clothing and equipment or use a closed cab. Use the longest restricted entry interval and pre-harvest intervals on the label. Test the pesticide for possibility of crop injury on a small area before treating the entire crop that is within a high tunnel. So take these extra precautions. Supplemental labels. Um, if a new use has just uh, been registered, uh, rather than reprinting the whole label, uh, new information might not be on that current printed label, but new information uh, will be on a supplemental label. So um, get to get the new use, um, the label has been expanded to include more crops and pests, and you can read that supplemental label. It goes alongside and with the original current label. Follow all the information given on the supplemental label and the current label. And you can get those from your pesticide sales representative. They'll know, uh, grower associations uh, will know for that uh, crop. And PMRA's pesticide labels are online, as I mentioned earlier, and you can search that and the supplemental labels will be there as well. Okay, read all the information on the label each year, read the current label, read the booklet, and any additional information is attached, so read it all. You must follow the label directions to be using that pesticide legally. Again, Health Canada, the pesticide labels app is available for you. You can uh, download and save um, labels offline as well, so you don't have to be connected, but um, you can have them right in the field on your phone if you like. So check it out, pesticide labels from the Government of Canada and uh, Health Canada. Thanks.